We don't know what women are like when they have political power because they've never had it. I mean, there's been queens, obviously, and that sort of thing. There's been female authority figures, and females have wielded far more power historically than feminists generally like to admit. But this is a different thing. And we don't know what, what a, a truly female political philosophy would be like. But it might be, especially if it's not been well examined and it isn't very sophisticated conceptually. It could easily be, well, let's make sure things are distributed equally. Well, yeah, but sorry, that, that's just not going to fly. All I right. call it objectivism. All right. Meaning a philosophy based on objective reality. And let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute. That man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it. And that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality which has so far been believed impossible, namely a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason, a morality which can be proved by means of logic, which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. I think my, my sense is that I don't regard Ayn Rand as a great mind. Now, may I define what my morality is? Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hope that if man wants to live on earth and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute, by which I mean that he has to hold reason as his only guide to action and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness and that he must not force other people nor accept their right to force him that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest i i don't i don't think that her take on things was sufficiently differentiated and sophisticated. You are out to destroy almost every edifice in the contemporary American way of life, our Judeo-Christian religion, our modified government-regulated capitalism, our rule by the majority will. Other reviews have said that you scorn churches and the concept of God. Are these accurate criticisms? Uh, yes. I agree with the facts, but not the estimates of this criticism. Namely, if I am challenging the base of all these institutions, I'm challenging the moral code of altruism, the precept that man's moral duty is to live for others, that man must sacrifice himself to others, which is the present day morality. Since I'm challenging the base, I necessarily would challenge the institutions, you name them, which are a result of that morality. She, is, she just isn't a top-rate philosopher. You say that you do not like the altruism by which we live. You, you like a certain kind of Ayn Randist selfishness. I uh, would say that I don't like is too weak a word. I consider evil. And uh, self-sacrifice is the precept that man needs to serve others in order to justify his existence, that his moral duty is to serve others. That is what most people believe today. But that is what, uh, in fact, makes man a sacrificial animal. That man must work for others, concern himself with others, or be responsible for them. That is the role of a sacrificial object. I say that man is entitled to his own happiness and that he must achieve it himself, but that he cannot demand that others give up their lives to make him happy. I and am. nor should he wish to sacrifice himself for the happiness of others. I hold that man should have self-esteem. Ayn Rand, it's just like, it's just too formulaic in my estimation. And so it starts to verge on the ideological. And she was primarily motivated by making a political point rather than by writing literature in my estimation. 
Do you consider yourself primarily a novelist or primarily a philosopher? I would say I'm primarily both equally and for the same reasons. You see, my main interest and purpose, both in literature and in philosophy, is to define and present the image of an ideal man, the specific concrete image of what man can be and ought to be. And when I started writing, when I approached the task of literature and began to study philosophy, I discovered that I was in profound disagreement with all the existing philosophies, particularly their codes of morality. Therefore, I had to do my own thinking. I had to define my own full philosophical system in order to discover and present the kind of ideas and premises that make an ideal man possible, in order to define what kind of convictions would result in the character of an ideal man. The artist shouldn't be able exactly to say what he or she is doing. If you can say what you're doing, you're not producing art. Art is, uh, well, you could say art bears the same relationship to culture that the dream does to mental stability. You know, your, your dream doesn't say what it's about, it just is. You can interpret it and that's helpful sometimes, just like movie criticism is helpful. But the dream is something that extends you beyond where you already are. Mm -hmm. That's why it isn't verbal thought, it's something else. It's like a pseudopod that's going out into the unknown. That's what art is. Why do you object to, or uh, why do you not like, novels which are close to life as it really is, naturalism? Because I don't think it's art. It's not art. It, it's partly art. Mm -hmm. In other words, a naturalistic novel is an incomplete work of art. It has certain elements uh, of art, such as characterization, or some of them have a good style. Mm -hmm. All that is artistic, but art primarily, and that I can prove philosophically, is a recreation of reality, not a phot photograph. Art is not journalism. It is a recreation of reality according to an author's metaphysical value judgments. Metaphysical Does that mean that meaning. you write only about what ought to be, not what is? Uh, yes, but let me finish. Mm. I use the big words, so I want to be sure that the audience does understand me, but metaphysical I mean the nature of reality as such, the nature of existence. It's his view of man and of the nature of existence that a writer or any artist really uh, expresses in art. And uh, romantic art presents to man what he might be and ought to be. That is, it presents an ideal and tells man this is the essential nature of man, and you as a human being can become that if you wish. So that uh, art in that sense, romantic art, is model building. Not, however, and I emphasize that, not for the purpose of improving or teaching your read, uh, something to your readers. Not teaching. Oh, not teaching. Art should never be the didactic. That's a secondary issue. That's pure gravy. Uh, the primary purpose of art is contemplation for its own sake. So that the purpose here is for the reader to see what greatness man is capable of is, and to be inspired by that. If so as I read Atlas Shrug then, uh, and any one of the heroic characters, Hank Reardon or John Galt or uh, Fran Francisco, these give me a model of the kind of person I might be? If you wish, but that isn't my purpose in writing. I see. My purpose is for you to look at those people. Mm. and to enjoy the spectacle. As a secondary consequence, you might find yourself inspired. Yes. That's fine. But I want to give you that experience. And that's what I want to give myself. I write for the purpose of creating an ideal man in actions which you can respect and admire. And the artist who subsumes the artistic vision to the ideological framework is putting the cart before the horse. It's actually a sin, I would say. It's like the ultimate in creative sins to do that because you're harnessing the greater to the lesser. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you understand things and you could tell a story about what you understand. It's like, no, no, you tell a story about what you don't understand and then you pull everyone into the story. The story's an exploration in that way. And so, you know, that's why I don't really think that Ayn Rand qualifies as literature. I liked her books, mm. like I got into them, you know, but but she 
she knew what she was saying. It's a rational man, an independent man, and a man of great self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I would name these three as the distinguishing characteristics, the essential ones of what I regard as an ideal man. And certainly an ideal man would never permit himself to act on the guidance of emotions or to act without knowing exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. If he's guided by reason, this will be the first two consequences. He will always know what he is doing and why, and he will not act blindly, and he would not act on because he felt like it. To my ideal man and to me, this is one of the worst, most immoral actions that anyone can permit himself to say, I did it because I felt like it. I don't really disapprove of Ayn Rand. I liked reading her novels.